Welcome to Savvy Business, Life Unscripted, with your host, Christina Rivera, where our guests share their wisdom and valuable business tips, empowering our audience to expand their personal potential. Hi, Kristen Hitchcock. Welcome to Savvy Broadcasting Life Unscripted. I'm so grateful to have you here today. How are you? I'm doing fantastic. Thank you. I am so grateful to have you, the CEO and co-founder of Cardia, and we're going to talk about building a heart-centered business, because uh, that's just what you've done with Cardia, but share what Cardia is, what do you do, what is the business about, and, and then we're going to dive into how anyone beginning to start a business, how or if they have a business, how to make it heart-centered. That's awesome. Well, Cardia first started off as a financial services company. We were called Cardia Financial Group. Um, but over the time, we realized that really what we were doing is building business practices. Uh, we named our company Cardia because it's the Greek word for heart. And so what we wanted to really do in everything that we do is bring that heart-centered approach into finances at the beginning, but now it's really into business. And so we talk a lot about how to build financial services companies. We are now more focused as a uh, what I'd call like a venture, um, operational venture company. Um, so we have real estate companies, financial companies. We do a lot of what we call ecotech, which is really exciting and new and, and improved into the, to make this world a better place. But we also own a chocolate shop um, in a local community. And so mm -hmm. we do a lot of different businesses. It's all more about how we run businesses rather than the businesses themselves, if that makes sense. Yeah, absolutely. So let's dive into what does it mean when you say heart-centered business? What, what does that look like? I love it. So thank you for asking that. And so what I look at when we start a heart-centered company is that, like, what are we doing the business for? I think when it looks at from us, it's about building companies that are one, contributing to the people that are working in that business. So a simple example is make sure you're paying living wages, right? Like let's not make sure that we're take, taking advantage of the working force. And even, even in those cases, pay above living wages, right? When that's cost, if you treat your people right, they will make sure they'll work extra hard for you. They'll do their job better and they'll feel more empowered doing it. So that's one little example. Can but I stop you there real quick? Yeah, Cause I had the best boss ever a million years ago and the business couldn't pay me a lot. But what he did is cause he recognized the talent is he said, you know, I want to, you know, reward everyone for their hard work. So what he would do is like, okay, you did great. I can't pay you more, but I can give you more time off or love it. Yeah, totally. so it was like, you know, like I'll find ways to reward my 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 employee base in ways I can do. Like if I can't afford it monetarily, I give you more time off or I give you this perk or, you know, he find different ways to do perks and just to acknowledge our, our work ethic. I love that. It's a great faction of, again, to a heart center business is actually thinking about the people talk about if you're working for you, like asking people, like for you, maybe it wasn't about making more money. It was about that time off flexibility in your workplace. So yeah, I love that concept and just clarity because sometimes it's not just about the money. I just use that sometimes as an example, because sometimes people don't even think about it. They're not looking at that. And I think it's just look for how you serve your people the best way possible and, and ask them rather than assuming. I think a heart center business asks their people what they need to feel supported, feel fulfilled in the work that they do. Yeah. What's important to you? Like right now, what's very important to me in my life is building my fitness. Um, last year I, yeah, I lost 40 pounds and oh. the, yeah. And the business I'm working with is really like congratulatory. And like, that's awesome what you're doing to build your, your body and your fitness. And so now I, you know, I spend time going in the morning and in the evening to the gym, but they allow me the time to do that. And I love so, that. Uh, that, that that's great what you're saying because you're talking like what are your needs right now and you know this is a partnership you're working for us but we're also here to serve you as well yeah i love that and it's about that kind of collective collaborative spirit right it's about people first right which is pretty awesome so i think that's from the internal side of things so looking asking questions treating people like they're humans and that we're all collectively going towards something right like the ceo in the company is as important as a human being as the janitor in the business as well or the front desk person or whatever it is because we're all doing our roles and that's yeah. really something that i think culturally you need to be able to put into be a heart center company it's going to be about the heart of the people and i use that word fulfillment mm -hmm. above all else so how are your people fulfilled and that the, what the dif difference between fulfillment and say is a lot of what people rate by is success mm -hmm. the success is an ex external measurement of where a person's at whereas fulfillment is internal 
And to find where people's fulfillment is, you have to ask them the questions. What is it you're wanting to do? How do you want to support that? And you know, this is the company's vision. How do you see yourself fitting into that role? How do you fit, get fulfillment in your work? So you're not miserable going to work. I that would be the worst nightmare for me would be to have a company with people who are miserable going to work, or they they have those sayings like, "Oh, finally it's Hump Wednesday," and it's it's thank God it's Friday. You know, all these things. I think are are signs that your culture and your business are promoting that their work isn't important enough that they love what they're doing and that their weekends are fun because that's important. You're going to get people to do their weekends or do their times off or whatever their schedule is like, but that's not what they're striving their life towards. Yeah. So I think that's part of asking the questions and engaging with your people. I, I like that you say that because you don't want to live for Fridays like TJ. TJ, uh, well, T, whatever you call it, thank God it's Friday. Uh, you're like, you, yeah. If you're like throwing away the whole week, just excited about the weekend, then what's the other five days you just threw in the garbage? Life is too short to be throwing five days in the garbage. Totally. <laughs> yeah, no, that's a big realization I've had over the years for sure is that. Yeah, and I love that you say, really ask your employees, because I've worked at companies, especially corporations in the past, where they pretty much didn't care if you had a life. In fact, very interestingly, it was discouraged. I remember going for yeah. an interview many years ago because I've been doing this podcast now for 10 years. And there was this company that was going to hire me. Um, and they said, well, you know, we kind of looked at your show and we think you might be a celebrity soon. So we don't want to hire you. I'm like, what? And they said, well, yeah, because your show, you've been doing this podcast, you look really like bam. And so, yeah, we think it might be. I'm like, why would that be a problem? I do a business show. That, that could be a win-win for you guys. Um, yes. But so I think business is to open up to realize that your people having a life outside of work can actually be a benefit because they can add to the pool. What do they have? Like, I'm a communicator. How can yeah. we use that in the business I'm working with you at? Yeah. And, and, and diff different employees you have working for you, they have different talents. How can that be put to use so that not only are they jazzed outside of work, but they're jazzed to come into your business? Yes. And encourage them to do that, right? And mm -hmm. encourage them to when they're there, they're present. But if like, sometimes it's like you also got to encourage people to go do outside stuff or take a day off, right? I don't know how many times I've had conversations with team members and they're just, they're just struggling because they're just something maybe in their personal life's happening or they're just maybe just tired. Sometimes we're just tired. And, and they, my response on the phone is, hey, take the rest of the day off, go for a walk, go for a run, go do something to engage yourself because there's no point of you just struggling along in work. You're not going to produce anything valuable at the end of the day. Or if you are, it's at the detriment of your own personal health. And so people are shocked with that idea, but it's like, they're going to come back the next day or two days later, just on fire, ready, fresh, ready to make things happen. And so care about your people first, because that is a, that's, I honestly think is your moral obligation. If you're an employee, if you're running a company and you have staff to treat them like they're royalty, because at the end of the day, they're the lifeblood of your business. Mm -hmm. And so treat them like that, right? Pe treat them with respect and they're going to do the same back to you and your business. Yeah. And, and just uh, on point to that, that, that boss I talked about that really looked for ways to reward his crew, even if it wasn't financially, um, he was great because he said to us, you know, what is important to you at the time when I worked with him, I was studying Spanish. Now I just happened to drop that. And I was sorry that I did that. Cause he said, great, you handle all the Spanish speaking countries. Now I'm like, what? No, you do realize this is first year Spanish, right? No, yeah, but yeah, what yeah. was great about it, it got me outside of my yeah, comfort yeah. zone, but it got me to grow. And, and to expand me to something new I, I hadn't tried. It. So he really is one of my best bosses that yeah. way because he really pushed me as a person, not just um, as a worker coming in to do whatever job they hired me to do. Yeah. Yeah, and it's fun. So kind of on the point of the personal thing, and I'll jump to the other part too, on the on your team members and stuff, is encourage them and empower them based on their personal skill sets, not based on their resumes or based on what their experiences have been. An example of that, my chief communicate, my chief um, HR officer in our company, and we have quite a bit of staff, we are growing constantly. Um, she used to be a kindergarten teacher, right? And so she moved in, but when she first was hired as an executive assistant inside of our company, she really had this idea, like, I really want to build an HR department. And guess what I said? I'm like, oh, you really want to build an HR department? Guess what? She's passionate about it. Then if she's saying that, how many people say, I want to build the HR department? Not that many. And so I gave her that role as an HR manager. Very soon she got promoted to the chief because she had that skill set. She loved it. And she's creating some epic programs for our team. And she didn't have that background in HR, but it's at the end of the day, she sure had help working with people, working with kids, doing all those different scenarios. And she's, you know, she's a standout. I have one of my other guys in our team that was starting at, just got out of university. He was actually in university when I first hired him. 
And I just, I saw his skill set, his hunger. He was very much like I was like when I was younger. And so I was like, I gave him opportunities right away to run entire divisions, entire stuff. He's literally doing things, making decisions. And he's going back to class and the teacher's teaching him stuff. And he's like, I'm actually doing that stuff right now, right? But it was because that's that idea. So that's what I want to say on the people side, treat your people right, focus on them. That's a heart-centered company. The other side of that too is who are you serving? And so there's a community that you're serving. And so there's, it's one is like your actual, whatever your customer base is, if you're selling a product or you have a service or you're doing something, how are you treating them? How are you making them feel? Right? You know, are you making sure that they're prioritized as well and making sure that you're taking care of them going above and beyond? I think that's obviously part of a heart centered company always, but then also your local community, things you don't really think about. I'll give you an example why we bought a chocolate business. Uh, I really want to have an idea and we want to publish and write a lot of stuff about small businesses. We do a lot of big business. We're working with governments on eco projects. We're doing like massive things, but also the root of a, a, a town is the small business owners. And so we, we started one because we want to show, do concepts to show that it's possible so that other people can do it too at that, that level. And so one of the examples for the, co- the chocolate business that we have is that we work with and we're partnering with local nonprofits because what's the biggest thing with nonprofits or charities that they're always asking for money, but so many people have like a limited amount that they can give every year. But guess what? These people that they're wanting to ask for giving are buying products. And so we partner with local nonprofits to say, Hey, come work with us. If you promote our chocolate, we'll give you 10 or 20% of all those profit, the sales that come in to your charity or to your nonprofit. So for me, it works, right? As a small business in a local town, you're making money because you have a solid referral source, but you're also now giving back to the community. It's really a term called strategic philanthropy that I learned from one of my early stage mentors. And so that right there is another opportunity that your business can serve a community and, and, and people maybe not think of like, how does your service business or your restaurant or your whatever serve the nonprofits around? Well, that's one very simple way that works both ways. It's not giving because you're making profit off that as well. Yeah. but you also are contributing and serving that. So look at it as a business. If you want to be a heart-centered company, how do I give back to my team members, the people we're serving and the local co- local community that I'm in, yeah. I think is really important to think about. Well, I love that because it's thinking outside the box. How do we work together where we all get met? It doesn't have to be one loses and another wins. It could be, the, all right, there's a piece in it for everyone here and it could be very beneficial. I remember working in a company. I, I really thought highly of them when I first started there, but it was interesting. A lot of the customers were very disgruntled and it was while I was talking to them as an accountant, they would say, well, once they got me to sign on a dotted line, it's like no one ever calls me back except for you. And I wasn't in the sales department, yeah. but I felt like they should be taken care of. It was kind of like the receptionist didn't know where to send them. So they all were going there. all over the company and I would just take the call and say, how can I help you? And then just talking to them, letting them know they're being heard. And then I would try to hunt down whoever yeah. their person was or rep. They felt like, wow, someone's finally listening to me. And that can be so important just to know the client knows that you're paying attention, listening to their needs. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's so focused. And that matters. And people remember that they'll give you more referrals. They'll be more solid as a thing. I think a lot of people miss that in the business world, right? They're really just focusing on one like bottom line. But this is what I'm thinking. This is interesting for me. I'm an entrepreneur, but I believe in doing good and making money at the same time. I don't think that they're mutually exclusive. And so what I mean by that is because you are thinking of the bottom line doesn't mean you need to take advantage of the people around you or the staff or that kind of stuff. If you focus on doing good and making money, I honestly believe over the long run, you're going to make a lot more money long term. Mm-hmm. I'll give it a quick example on that. In regards to um, about a, a, over a decade ago, I, my background's in finance. So I was a financial advisor for a long time. And there was this new funds, this company came out called Ethical Funds. And so it was funds based on they would only invest in ethical things. Things are making a difference on the planet. They weren't doing things like, you know, they weren't going gun manufacturing or uh, they weren't doing tobacco manufacturing. All those businesses are their businesses or whatever. But for them, they thought we're doing things that are going to contribute bigger to the society and helping. And everyone, all the analysts were saying, uh, you know, if you want to invest with ethical funds, just know that you'll probably be, you'll be sacrificing some return because you're wanting to do good, right? That was the common thing over a decade ago when they first launched. Well, we're wine now to now, you know, 10 plus years later, guess what's out of the mutual funds, the ones that they were comparing against are doing the best, the ethical funds. And so it's hilarious to think because in the early stage, you're like, oh, you're going to sacrifice return. No, actually, they, they did good and made more money than anyone else around them. And I honestly believe 
from the same correlation to heart-centered businesses. If you focus and do these heart-centered practices, you will better your community, you'll better the people around you, you'll make more money, you'll contribute better, and all of the things will become win-win-wins. And I am a solid believer in that. And that's why our company is going out to do that in multiple industries, prove that concept. Because I know as this bit, as humans, we always say, well, where's the proof? Well, that's what that's one of the things I'm trying to inspire other businesses to do the same thing. Do it. Talk about it. Don't be like, oh, we just do all these great benefits for our staff, but we don't share it with the world. No, talk about it. Share about all these things you're doing so that we can start making a movement of people, companies, organizations striving to build heart-centered companies that can go out there and make a difference on this planet and serve the communities where you have more people fulfilled and happy. And that whole saying of thank God it's Friday is gone because people are just enjoying where they're at. And they're happy with what they work in and they ser- that work serves their family and their hobbies and everyone, everything kind of works together. So that's the dream. I love it, Krista. You know, and it's so important. I recall that business I had talked about that didn't work out as well as I, I'd hoped. They kind of sold when I took the job that they were really philanthropists. They do a lot in the community and it seemed like they did. But when I started to get that feedback from their clients about how they were all not happy and it wasn't one, it was yeah. a lot. Yeah. It really turned me off. I was just like, you know, this it's all about the talk. So yeah. any business listen, listening in, if you have this new mission statement about, you know, we care about the community, really just don't make it the talk, make it the walk as well in yes. all areas because it's so important and because people will know when you're the bull meter, you know what I'm talking yeah. about. Yeah, when they when when they realize it ain't true, it's gonna come out pretty quickly. Yeah. <laughs> and, and also on that part of it, the ones that are already doing it greatness does not need to be hidden anymore, right? I feel like we live in a culture that people think, oh, if you're talking about something, you're boasting or you're bragging. And it's really squashed a lot of the exciting, great stuff that companies and people are doing. And so if you are in an authentic person and you're actually doing it for the right reasons, you aren't doing it like those companies are just making a statement that they don't actually believe in. If you're doing it, you need to be speaking out. You need to be sharing that and giving other businesses the opportunity to look at that and see that it works so that they can start learning and doing it as well. And so I, that, that's the thing. Let's rise up as what we as these heart-centered entrepreneurs, as these heart-centered businesses. Let's share with the world that this stuff's possible, that we can make a difference, we can do good and make money at the same time. Because at the end of the day, we are in business. We're talking about businesses. You're not and making so money. You're going to be out of business. You're going to be out of business and you're not going to be able to make the impact you want to make. So yeah. just remember that. I think that's something, be open to share about these ideas and, and it's, it's collective, it's collaborative, this heart-centered approach. That's another big thing. Everything that we do in all of our companies, we fully will publish, fully share with other companies how we're doing it. We don't have these trade secrets or these special mm-hmm. things. There's billions of people on this planet and your business practices, you don't need to hold in. Like you don't have the competition. If you collaborate, trust me again, that's a doing good and making money strategy. You'll make more money. You'll collaborate. You'll work with someone that you think was a competitor. And all of a sudden you'll become really good strategic partners because the certain clientele that you, you don't want, they serve really well. And they, you pass back and forth. Even you might be doing the exact same strategy. The personalities are different. You may only work with a, you know, a five person business where that person works with 10 person plus business. Well, guess what? Now you can collaborate because you opened up and you shared. And I think that's the, take that first step. Yeah. Transparency is the way to go. And you mentioned something there very important that not every client is a good fit and it's okay. And I've done it myself when someone's come here and I'm like, you're not right for our brand, but I know someone exactly who is, I send them to them. And you know, this way there's not this, Oh, we're, we're having to knock out the other competition. Not every, not every client is a good fit. Um, but where do people go? Chris, uh, Kristen, find out more about cardia. How can they do that and work with you guys? I love it. Well, there's one, there are websites uh, involving and getting more and more stuff on it. So it's hello, cardia with a K. So H E L L O K A R D I A.com is our website. Um, and then for myself, my website is Kristen, C H R I S T A N h i s c o c k dot com so kristen hiscock dot com um, both of those places on my personal talks a lot about this fulfillment talk and how to build heart centered businesses and practices on the cardio stuff it talks a lot we'll have articles based on hr based on marketing finance um, as well as just what we're doing in the world and seeing how you can collaborate on some of our projects it might be a great fit yeah and uh, what i love is that the name cardia comes from a greek word that means heart right yes I love exactly that. Yeah. Well, thank you so much, Kristen, for coming today to share your great wisdom on Savvy Broadcasting. I really appreciate you coming. Oh, thank you for having me. I really appreciate it. It was a fun time. 
like, subscribe, and share this episode. To listen to more savvy episodes and savvy biz tips, go to www.lifeunscriptedradio.com. To find out about our paid sponsorship opportunities or how to become a guest, email Christina at lifeunscriptedradio.com. 